Hello, I am Seamus Dunahu of Eve University, and this video is about missiles. Missiles are one of the three most common weapon systems in EVE Online, the other two most common being turrets and drones, in no particular order. In order to use missiles, you will need missile launchers of some sort, and you will need missiles compatible with the launcher. Later in this video, I'll discuss the different types and sizes of missiles that are available. You will also need a ship that has high power slots and launcher hardpoints. Uh, so for example, right now I'm sitting in a Condor class Kaldari frigate, and a Condor has four high slots and three launcher hardpoints. Right. A missile launcher will use one of each of these things simultaneously. So when I fit a rocket launcher to a Condor, it takes up one of the four high slots and one of the three launcher hardpoints. Some ship types, such as the Kestrel that we'll be looking at later, has as many hardpoints as it does high power slots. So a Kestrel has four launcher hardpoints, no turret hardpoints, and four high power slots. But that's not true of all ship types. So the Condor has four high slots, but only three launcher hardpoints. So I can fit a total of three rocket launchers onto this thing, but when I try to fit a fourth launcher onto it, it spits out an error message at me. So I have the high power slot, but I don't have any launcher hardpoints remaining. Then you need to fit missiles into the missile launcher. Right. Now, there are some attributes of the launchers and of the missiles themselves that you need to be concerned with. First of all, for the launcher itself, when I show info on this, the launcher requires a certain amount of fitting space, besides the fact that it needs a high power slot and a launcher hardpoint. It also needs some amount of CPU and power grid. Almost all modules require some amount of CPU and power grid. There are some exceptions, but most require at least one of each. Your basic Tech 1 rocket launcher needs 15 teraflops of CPU and 4 megawatts of power grid. Of course, reduced by some skills and bonuses, such as, for example, weapon upgrades to reduce how much CPU your weapons use, and advanced weapon upgrades to reduce how much power grid your weapons use. Other attributes to be aware of on the missile launcher itself. The launcher can spit out missiles at a certain rate. So again, for your basic Tech 1 rocket launcher, it's going to be one missile fired every five seconds. Your missile launchers also have a certain capacity, which dictates how many missiles that they can hold. Uh, again, a rocket launcher 1 has a capacity of 0 0.19 cubic meters. Compare this to the Inferno rocket that I'm stuffing into it. The Inferno rocket has a volume of 0 0.005 cubic meters each. So if I grab my calculator, uh, 0 0.19 divided by 0 0.005, it should be able to fit uh, 38 rockets, theoretically. Although in this particular case, it can only fit 37. I'm not entirely sure why. I'm guessing it's a round-off error. Maybe it can only fit 37.999, and therefore it rounds down to 37. I don't know. But that's what determines how many missiles you can load into a missile launcher. The volume of the charge and the capacity of the module. So capacity divided by volume, that's how many shots you can load into the thing. And it can fire one shot every five seconds. And once it, once the module runs out of ammunition, it needs to reload uh, from any additional missiles that you have in your ship's cargo bay. Uh, and that's going to take generally 10 seconds for most missile launchers that we'll see uh, later on that there are modules with the word rapid in them which require 30, 35, 40 second reload times. Right. So that's the those are the attributes you need to be concerned with on the launcher itself. Uh, let me make sure I didn't forget anything. Uh, no, that's it. Uh, I'm not going to cover thermodynamics here. For the missile itself, Let's show information on the missile. This is a charge that does damage to your enemy. 
So the first thing you probably care about is the amount of damage it does. So an Infernal Rocket uh, does 33 hit, uh, hit points of thermal damage to the enemy. Unfortunately, the story is not that simple. Uh, you also have an explosion radius, an explosion, an explosion velocity, a maximum flight time, and a maximum velocity. Let me cover these one at a time. First of all, when you fire a missile, the missile travels through space and takes some amount of time to reach its target. Contrast this with turrets, which are instantaneous in their effect. You fire a turret, and you know immediately, hit or miss. There's absolutely no amount of time that passes. It's instantaneous. It's not the case with missiles. Missiles actually have to travel to their target. And the default numbers for rockets, at least for Tech 1 rockets, they have a flight time of 2 seconds and a maximum velocity of 2,250 meters per second. So there's absolutely no way this rocket can travel more than 4,500 meters from wherever you launched it from. So the target has to be, assuming the target is sitting still, the target has to be within 4.5 kilometers of you in order for this rocket to catch up to it. Otherwise, it's too far away, and the rocket is going to run out of flight time and just fizzle out and die without doing anything to the target whatsoever. Uh, it's worth noting that this is a velocity relative to the game's absolute coordinate system. So relative to the sun, the planets, the moons, the stations, the stargates, uh, the wormholes, uh, and relative to the crystal sphere holding the fixed stars. This is not elite dangerous. The planets and moons in EVE Online do not actually go anywhere. So this maximum velocity is just the maximum velocity relative to the game's absolute coordinate system. So if the target is running away from you, or more precisely running away from your missile, then your missile is going to need to catch up to it, which means it's probably going to need more flight time than usual in order to cover that distance the missile is more likely to run out of flight time doing that. If, however, you're running away from the target, the target's chasing you, and is running headlong into your missiles, then your missiles don't need as much flight time to catch up to the target because the target is meeting it part way, meeting your missile part way. So your missiles are more likely to be able to catch the target if the target is chasing you. If the missile actually does catch up to the target, then how much damage the missile will actually do depends on a few factors. First of all, there's the actual raw amount of damage that the missile does, as well as the damage type for the missile. Right? But then we've also got these parameters called explosion radius and explosion velocity. And just a word of warning, explosion radius is not what it sounds like. This is not an area of effect weapon. Missiles cannot ever, under any circumstances, damage more than one target. Explosion radius and explosion velocity are just abstract parameters that say, I do diluted damage to targets smaller than this, in this case 20 meters, in signature radius, and moving faster than this. So the only way this Inferno rocket is actually going to do 33 hit points of damage, the only way this rocket is going to actually take off 33 points from the enemy's shields or armor or structure, is if the target is bigger than 20 meters in signature radius, is moving slower than 150 meters per second, again relative to the game's absolute coordinate system, and has exactly zero thermal resistances. Most targets that you fire at will have some sort of resistances. Uh, usually the only things you're going to encounter that have zero re resistances exactly are certain kinds of structures uh, that aren't ships, as well as any player ships that are using something called polarized weapons because a polarized weapon will cause all resistances on that ship to drop to exactly zero. Most of the time, the resistances are not zero. And some of the time, you're firing missiles at targets that are smaller than the missile expects, 
or are moving faster uh, than the missile expects. So if the target's got non-zero thermal resistance, or it's moving faster than 150 meters per second, or it's smaller than 20 meters signature radius, then this Inferno rocket is not going to do its full damage. Uh, and this is going to be true for any kind of missile that you're shooting at an enemy. All these parameters behave exactly in ex exactly the same way, regardless of what types of enemies we're talking about and what types of missiles we're using. All that really changes are the parameters. So bigger missiles will have bigger raw damage numbers, uh, but will have different values for explosion velocity, explosion radius, maximum velocity, and maximum flight time. Now, all the numbers that you're seeing here are basically out-of-the-box numbers. Uh, whenever you show info on a charge or on a module, either from your cargo hold or your station item hanger, or you're showing info on them from the market, such as, for example, I go to ship equipment, turrets and bays, missile launchers, rocket launchers, and I can show info on, let's say, a Tech-2 rocket launcher. These are the numbers out of the box. So uh, if I'm showing info just on the Inferno rocket as it's in the cargo hold, it claims two seconds flight time, 2,250 meters per second max velocity, 33 hit points of thermal damage. If I show information on a missile or a module from the fitting window, so I go to the fitting window, I mouse over the circular show info button, so ch show charge info. Now when I look at the numbers on the Inferno rocket, it's taking my skill, any relevant skills and bonuses into account. So an ex the explosion radius is 16 meters instead of 20 meters. Uh, the explosion velocity is 210 instead of 150 meters per second. I've got a maximum flight time of 2.8 seconds instead of 2 seconds. I've got a maximum velocity of 3.15 meters per second. Uh, I'm sorry, 3.15 kilometers per second instead of 2.25 kilometers per second. And I've got a raw damage of 44.55 hit points instead of just 33 hit points. Right? So whenever you show information on a charge or a module as it's in from the fitting window, as it is fit to your ship, it's taking skills and bonuses into account. Uh, if you're just showing info from your cargo hold or from the ship's uh, or from the station item hanger or from the market, then that those are just default out of the box numbers. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, ships that might have bonuses for it. I'm not going to cover all of the different ships that have bonuses for missiles. Uh, but just to give you a couple of examples, so right now I'm sitting in a Condor, so I can show info on the Condor. I can go to the Traits tab. So the Condor has a 10% bonus to uh, light missile and rocket damage as long as they do kinetic damage. So I'm not getting any bonuses on these Inferno rockets. Yeah, these Thermal rocket, the Inferno rockets, it's only 44.55 hit points. Uh, whereas, let me grab some other rocket types. Missiles, rockets, standard rockets. Uh, so Scourge is what actually does kinetic damage. Let us let me grab a hundred of those. And uh, let me grab something else that's not kinetic damage, just to show you that it's the same. Nova. That's explosive. All right, so I yank out the Inferno rockets. Let me put Nova into the second launcher and put Scourge into the first. So if I show info on the Nova rockets, that's explosive damage. That's also 44.55 hit points. Whereas if I show info on the Scourge rockets as fit to my ship, that's 66.83 hit points of kinetic damage. And that's because they're benefiting from this trait, 10% bonus to kinetic light missile and rocket damage per level of Kaldari Frigate. I've got Kaldari Frigate level 5. Let me actually prove that to you. So sk character sheet, skills, skills tab, spaceship command, here... Kaldari Frigate level 5. All right. 
So that's a 50% bonus to kinetic damage. So my Scourge missiles will do 50% more damage uh, than any other missile type. Uh, I just realized that I forgot to cover some of the more basic terminology. So in EVE Online, missiles and missile launchers are the general terms for this type of weapon system that have these sorts of parameters. You'll notice various other names that we're using for more specific kinds of missiles, and I'll explain these later in this video. So you'll hear me talk about rockets, light missiles, heavy missiles, heavy assault missiles, torpedoes, cruise missiles, extra-large torpedoes, extra-large cruise missiles. You'll hear me talk about light missile launchers, rapid light missile launchers, rapid torpedo launchers, uh, cruise missile launchers, so on and so forth. These are all just specific subsets. And the overall umbrella term is missiles. So generally, these are all missiles and missile launchers. And any more specific terms just refer to specific types or sizes. If you're returning to EVE Online from a long absence, be aware that there have been some terminology changes. So you might remember, for example, that every damage type of missile uh, had its, uh, for every size, had its own name. Oh, I forgot to mention, each missile only does a single pure damage type, right? So all Nova missiles do explosive damage. All Scourge missiles do kinetic damage. All Mjolnir missiles do EM damage. All Inferno missiles do thermal damage. And yes, that is a change from a few years ago. So there's no more having to keep track of all sorts of different names all over the place. There's no longer, they're not called Flame Burst or Foxfire or Gremlin or any of a dozen other different names. Right? There's just those four names for the four damage types. Mjolnir, Inferno, Scourge, Nova. And that's across the board. So yeah, missiles do a pure, single pure damage type, depending on which type of missile you've loaded into your launcher. Contrast this with turrets, where your damage types are a mix of things. So if you're firing lasers, then what you're stuffing into your lasers are frequency crystals. Those are always going to be mixtures of electromagnetic and thermal. Uh, if you're using hybrids, that is to say blasters and railguns, then the hybrid charges you're loading in there are always going to be mixtures of kinetic and thermal. Uh, for projectiles, that is for artillery and autocannons, uh, the damage types go all over the place. Standard ammunition, small. So phased plasma, for example, is mostly thermal with a little kinetic. Depleted uranium is thermal, kinetic, and explosive. Uh, fusion is explosive and kinetic, so on and so forth. But missiles, you get to pick your damage type. So going back to vessel examples of vessels with various bonuses, uh, I've already talked a little bit about the Condor. That just has a, a bonus to kinetic light missile and rocket damage. Uh, it also has a roll bonus where any... Uh, Propulsion jamming modules that you're using have reduced capacitor cost. That I'm not going to talk about. This is not a video on tackling. Uh, but the Kestrel, as another example, uh, and actually, a Kestrel has bonuses to all light missile and rocket damage and maximum velocity. Right, so, again, looking at these rockets as fit to my Condor. So these things have a max velocity of 3.15 kilometers per second. Let me actually switch to a Kestrel that I fitted out with, at least partially fitted out with rockets. By the way, in this video, I'm just focusing on missile systems. Uh, so in fitting these things in a hurry, I've left the mid slots and low slots empty. Do not actually leave your mid slots and low slots empty. What you put into the slots will depend on what you're trying to use the ship for. But anyway, looking at my Kestrel, and I show info on the Scourge rockets, same rocket type, same rocket launcher type, all that's changed is the ship. Uh, so the max velocity on these things is now 4.725 
kilometers per second. It's still 2.8 seconds for maximum flight time, but missiles fired from a Kestrel travel faster and therefore farther than missiles fired from a Condor, simply because of the differences in bonuses between a Kestrel and a Condor. Right, so make sure you're paying attention to the bonuses on whatever ship that it is that you're flying, and that goes for pretty much whatever you're fitting out. All right, so let's talk about the different sizes. Uh, th there are different names for different sizes and, of missiles and missile launchers, so I'm going to go through the different sizes now. Uh, so at the smallest, we have the rockets. So rockets are the frigate size short-range missiles, or at least short-range as far as frigates are concerned. Whether we're talking about missiles or we're talking about turrets, there are long-range and short-range uh, variants of things. But these long-range and short-range variants are relative to the size of hull. So if I, when I eventually get around to redoing a video on turrets, you'll hear me talk about uh, say, beam lasers being the long-range lasers, and pulse lasers being the short-range lasers, that's long-range and short-range relative to whatever size of lasers we're talking about. So long-range frigate-sized lasers are still going to be shorter range than, say, short-range battleship-sized pulse lasers. And that's also going to be true for these missiles. So rockets are frigate size short-range missiles, or at least short-range for frigates, as far as frigates are concerned. Right. The next up, we have the light missiles. Light missiles are the long-range frigate size missiles. And you might have seen a moment ago, my rockets had an estimated range of 13 kilometers on a Kestrel. These light missiles have an estimated range of 55 kilometers, again, as fired from a Kestrel. So these are long-range uh, frigate-sized missiles, and they're fired from light missile launchers. The next step up, I'm going to move up to caracals. So now we're talking about cruiser-sized modules. And here we have an example of a rapid launcher. By the way, turrets generally don't have an analogy to this, at least not in the subcapital range. So a rapid light missile launcher is a cruiser-sized module that fires frigate-sized missiles. And again, light missiles are long-range frigate-sized missiles. It's just that a rapid light missile launcher can spit these things out faster than a light missile launcher can. So if we go to the market, Browse tab, ship equipment, turrets and bays, missile launchers. Let me make sure I have my compare tool open. If you don't have your compare tool on your Neocom bar, you can go to the Neocom menu, uh, compare tool. Uh, let's drag in, hold on, I want to compare a light missile launcher 1 and a rapid light missile launcher 1. So these are the basic Tech 1 versions of these things. Uh, so reload time, capacity, rate of fire, CPU usage, and power grid usage. There we go. So the Rapid Light Missile Launcher has a much higher power grid requirement than the Light Missile Launcher. Again, this is a cruiser size module. Most frigates cannot spare 73 megawatts to fit a Rapid Light Missile Launcher. Uh, and their capacity is much less than a regular light missile launcher, but the rate of fire is much faster. So a rapid light missile launcher can spit these things out uh, twice as fast as its frigate-sized counterpart. Same at the same shot type, these are still light missiles that we're talking about here, it's just that the, uh, the cruiser-sized module, the rapid light missile launcher, can belch these things out much faster than any frigate can. Right? So these are very good as an anti-frigate weapon system. They're eh, okay against other cruisers, uh, but if you're expecting to go up against lots and lots of cruisers, you may want to use one of the other missile systems, which 
brings us to uh, the heavy assault missiles. Heavy assault missiles are short-range cruiser-sized missiles, and they're fired from heavy assault missile launchers. Uh, the ne next step up would be the heavy missiles. The heavy missiles are the long-range cruiser-sized missiles. Again, long-range as far as cruisers are concerned, and these are fired from heavy missile launchers. Uh, by the way, just to compare and contrast the uh, long-range and short-range systems for the same size here, let me again open up my compare tool, and let's compare heavy missiles, standard heavy missiles. Let's compare a Scourge heavy missile to a Scourge heavy assault missile. And we're concerned about kinetic damage, explosion radius, maximum velocity, maximum flight time, explosion velocity. Here we go. All right. So we're comparing the short range missile to the long range missile, again, for the cruiser size. So the Scourge heavy assault missile, of course, being a short range weapon, has less flight time and less maximum velocity. So, of course, it's going to be shorter range. Uh, four seconds times 2.25 kilometers per second, that's going to be less than six and a half seconds times 4.3 kilometers per second. Uh, for the damage numbers, at first, this number doesn't make sense because the short range missile does less damage than the long range missile. Uh, but it's got a couple of factors in its favor. First of all, it's got a smaller explosion radius, so it's less likely to have its damage diluted because the target is small. Right? Additionally, it has a bigger explosion velocity, so the he heavy assault missile is less likely to have its damage diluted because of the target being fast. So it does has less raw damage, but it can better apply that damage once it catches up to the target. It's better able to deal with small, uh, smaller, faster targets than a heavy missile can deal with. Additionally, you also have to remember you want to compare the launchers. So let's go down to the launchers. Turrets and bays. So here we have a heavy assault missile launcher one and the heavy missile launcher one. So again, short range and long range. Uh, so reload time is the same. So capacity, rate of fire, uh, power grid usage, CPU usage. Uh, I think that's all that we care about right now. All right. So the power grid usage and CPU usage are roughly the same, but the heavy assault missile launcher has a, a refire time of eight seconds. By the way, with turrets and missiles, uh, these parameters are called rate of fire. It's actually a misnomer. It's actually the inverse of the rate of fire. It's really the refire time. So the heavy missile launcher has a refire time of 15 seconds, whereas the uh, heavy assault missile launcher has a refire time of 8 seconds. That's almost twice as fast. So the heavy assault missiles only de dealt 100 hit points of damage each, as opposed to the heavy missiles 142 hit points each. But it's much faster. There's, you're spitting out more of these things. Right? So 100 hit points, let's multiply this by the ratio of uh, rates of fire. So times 15 divided by 8. So on a basically in the time it... Uh, in the time it takes to do 142 hit points uh, of damage, you could also you could do 187 hit points of damage with the short range version. So individually, the short range missiles might do less damage each, but you're spitting out more of them. Uh, let me also make sure I remember what the volumes on these things are. So yeah, your short range missiles also take up less volume in your cargo hold than the long range missiles. 
So you do more damage per second with the short-range weapon systems than with the long-range weapon systems. So just to review how far we've gotten so far, uh, rockets are fired from rocket launchers. Those are the short-range frigate missiles. Light missiles fired from a light missile launcher. Those are the long-range frigate missiles. Then we moved up to the rapid light missile launchers. That's a cruiser-sized module that spits out long-range frigate-sized missiles. Then we talked about heavy assault missiles, which are short-range cruiser size. And now we've got the heavy missiles, which are the long-range cruiser size. Uh, then we move up to the battleship size modules. So here we have the rapid heavy missile launcher Raven. And just like the rapid light missile launcher, this is a battleship size module that fires long-range cruiser size missiles. All right. Again, long range as far as cruisers are concerned. All right. And again, the rapid heavy missile launchers can spit these things out faster than a heavy missile launcher can. Uh, then we move on to torpedoes, which are the short-range battleship size missiles. And then finally, we have the cruise missiles, which are the long-range battleship size missiles. All right. And again, long range as far as battleships are concerned. So fitting these to a Raven, I've got these up to a maximum flight range of 180 kilometers. But again, keep in mind, this is taking my skills and bonuses into account. Uh, Raven battleships in particular do have a bonus to cruise missile and torpedo maximum velocity. And then I have Kaldari battleship up to, I think, level 4 or 5. i got to double check that. Uh, I can check that right here. I've got it up to level 4. Right? So I've got a 40% bonus to cruise missile and torpedo maximum velocity because I'm using uh, cruise missiles on a Raven and I've got Kaldari level, uh, battleship level 4. All right, so that's a 40% bonus on top of all the other skills and bonuses that I, may, that I might have. Let's finally, for the sake of complete list, completeness, let's move on to the uh, Dreadnought size modules. So the Dreadnoughts have uh, three different kinds of missile launchers. And actually, the only racial Dreadnought that can use missile launchers is the Phoenix-class Kaldari Dreadnought. Uh, the other three racial dreadnoughts, uh, the Minmatar Nagalfar, uh, the Galente Moros, and I think it's the Amarian Revelation. Is that correct? Let me double check that real quick. They all they all use uh, turrets of various sorts. The Phoenix is the only one that uses uh, missile launchers. So for the modules for a Phoenix. Uh, you've got the Rapid Torpedo Launcher, which again is a dreadnought size module that spits out battleship size missiles. It's just that these happen to be the short range instead of the long range missiles. Then you've got the Extra Large Torpedoes. Alright, so these are XL torpedoes fired from XL torpedo launchers. And finally, you have the XL Cruises fired from uh, XL cruise launchers, uh, XL cruise missile launchers. Uh, these are intended for really big targets, typically other capital ships. Uh, so my Phoenix here has uh, 11 kilometers in signature radius. Just for comparison, uh, most frigates are around 40 meters. Most cruisers are around 120 meters or so. A lot of battleships are in the 500 to 600 meter range, usually. Uh, a dreadnought is going to be upwards of 10 kilometers or 10,000 meters of signature radius. So these extra large cruise missiles are usually meant for being fired at structures like, say, citadels or customs offices or star bases. Uh, uh, or capitals or super capitals. Uh, these dreadnought sized missiles are kind of bad at trying to hit small targets. Right. Uh, 
I'm not going to talk about uh, Dreadnoughts too much, but when you go to take a look at the numbers on uh, extra-large uh, weaponry, uh, keep in mind that the way Dreadnoughts are set up, they're supposed to have something called a Siege Module. Uh, a Siege Module allows a Dreadnought to do lots of damage, but it can't actually maneuver during the five-minute Siege Cycle timer. And that five-minute cycle cannot be interrupted early unless the Dreadnought explodes. So as long as it's in Siege mode, it can do lots of damage, it, but it can't maneuver. So it can either maneuver or it can do good damage per second, not both. Right? So keep that in mind uh, when you're looking at the numbers for extra-large weaponry and some of the numbers seem a little wonky to you. It's also worth pointing out that extra-large weaponry are also used by the Titans. So in the case of the Leviathan Titan, uh, it has a bonus to uh, reduce the refire time of XL Cruises, XL Torps, and the Rapid Torpedo Launcher. Right. So this built-in bonus for the Titan compensates for the fact that Titans don't use siege modules. So those are all the different sizes of missiles and their launchers. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much further detail regarding missile systems other than to mention a couple of things you might want to simply be aware of. Defender missiles are special kinds of missiles that will shoot down enemy missiles coming in at you. Most players don't consider defender missiles to be of... Uh, particular use because they will only sh shoot down enemy missiles that are coming in at you. They won't shoot down missiles that are coming in at your fleet mates. Uh, the structure uh, missiles I haven't looked at too much. I believe these are meant to be fired by citadels, uh, but I gotta double check that. Auto-targeting missiles are missiles that do not require a target lock. Normally, with all of the missiles that I've mentioned, when you're out in space, you have to control left click something before you can open fire on it. That's true of turrets, that's going to be true of most of your missiles. Uh, but with the auto targeting missiles, you can load an auto targeting missile into your launcher. You can load auto targeting missiles into your launcher and start firing without having a target lock. They'll pick a target on their own. So, the good thing about that is you can put out damage per second despite the fact that you're being ECM jammed, or that you're being uh, sensor dampened so badly that you can't get a target lock on anything because all those enemies are way too far away for your sensor systems, se sensor systems to get a lock on. So you can't target lock them because your target lock range has been reduced down to 5 kilometers or something ridiculous, and they're all 20 kilometers away. Uh, but the downside is that you cannot ever direct where these things are going to go, even when you can get target locks. They'll just pick a target on their own, at least as far as I understand it. Um, I don't really use auto-targeting missiles all that much myself. Uh, but if being ECM jammed is a common situation for you, you might want to consider auto-targeting missiles. So these might be useful in, say, missions against Garistas, where you're getting jammed a little too much to be able to maintain a lock on anything. Uh, short of auto-targeting, if you can't use auto-targeting missiles, your only other alternative then is to use drones and tell your drones to go on aggressive and let your drones pick their own targets. And also tell them to focus fire, that way they're all attacking the same target. But, the prob uh, but another problem to keep in mind, especially if you're going to use these things for mission running, drones on aggressive and auto-targeting missiles might decide that they're going to shoot the one rat, the one NPC, whose death triggers the spawn of the next wave, and now you've got two waves of enemies coming at you instead of one. Um, finally, uh, I will mention very briefly uh, other meta-levels of uh, of missiles. 
So I've only really mentioned the standard missiles of any particular variety. So an Inferno rocket, or a Mjolnir light missile, or a Scourge heavy assault missile, and so on. Uh, there are more powerful versions known as faction missiles. Generally speaking, these can be obtained either from loyalty point stores or as uh, drops from NPC wrecks, but more commonly from loyalty point stores. So if you want to get Kaldari Navy Inferno rockets, uh, you need to go to, uh, you need to run missions for one of the Kaldari corporations and the loyalty point stores for some of those Kaldari corporations will have offerings for either uh, Kaldari Navy Inferno rocket blueprint copies, or maybe for the actual rockets themselves. Some loyalty point stores will offer the blueprint copy, some loyalty point stores will offer the rockets themselves, and you can get Kaldari Navy Inferno rockets, or say Kaldari Navy uh, Scourge Heavy Assault missiles. Right. So you can get those from the loyalty point stores. Or if you're working for the NPC pirate factions, so you're out in Venal working for Garista agents and you're running missions for the Garistas, then you're getting loyalty points with, very, with uh, one of the Garista corporations, and in their loyalty point stores you can get either the actual missiles or the blueprint copies for, say... Garista's Mjolnir Heavy Assault Missile. Or Dread Garista's Nova Cruise Missile, or whatever the case may be. Finally, there are the Advanced High Precision and the Advanced uh, High Damage, or the Advanced Anti-Ship and the Advanced Long Range Missiles. These are Tech 2 missiles, and they're meant to be fired from Tech 2 missile launchers. So, in the case of, say, the Heavy Assault Missile Launchers, I can use Inferno Rage, or I can use Inferno Javelin Heavy Assault Missiles, uh, but I need a Heavy Missile Launcher 2 to make use of it. Uh, so, a Heavy Missile Launcher 1 is not going to suffice. So, if I go to Ship Equipment, Turrets and Bays, where to go, Missile Launchers... Uh, Heavy Assault Launchers, here we go. So I need a Heavy Assault Missile Launcher 2 specifically. If I'm looking at the variations for this thing, none of the other variations will suffice. Well, the Polarized might work, I'm not sure, I haven't checked. Uh, but absolutely none of the other variations will work. Not the Kanyid Navy, uh, not the Republic Fleet, uh, not the uh, any of the meta versions, uh, only the Tech 2 variety. Actually, let me show info on the Polarized real quick. Alright, the Polarized can also use the Tech 2 uh, missiles. Alright, so only the, these two Tech 2 variants can make use of Tech 2 missiles. Uh, so if you want to use the advanced anti-ship or the advanced long-range missiles, you need the appropriate kind of Tech 2 missile launcher. Uh, again, if you want to use the advanced high damage or advanced high precision, you again need the appropriate type of Tech 2 launcher. Right. And that is an overall uh, review of missiles. I'm Seamus Dunahoo of Eve University. Thank you for watching.